Okay, I'd like to introduce our first speaker of the morning, uh, Dr. Clyde T. Tom Williams. He earned his Bachelor of Science and his Master's in Geology and Zoology at the University of Kansas, and additionally a PhD in Geology and Zoology at the University of California, Berkeley. He was employed for 20 plus years with Parsons Corporation, six plus years with URS Corporation, 10 years with the government of Dubai. He has worked on over 300 EIRs, EIS, and EAs, which I don't know what that means. <laughs> but I assume it's important. Uh, geology, groundwater, and oil and gas, US and worldwide. He is currently retired, a 30-year owner occupant at Northeast Los Angeles, born and raised in Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. Tom is a life member of the Sierra Club and past Golden Gate Audubon Conservation Committee Chair and a member of LA 32 Neighborhood Council. Welcome, Dr. Williams. Thank you. Uh, I'm digitally impaired, so my I've never been able to change my web name from Clyde to Tom, but I'm, I'm progressing. Yeah. Uh, the history, the technicals, and what do we do about it? The history is quite long. Actually, shortly, well, during the Civil War, they did fracking. They would light a stick of dynamite, drop it down the hole, and hope that it went off. Because if it doesn't go off, you got a problem. Then they progressed from dynamite to nitroglycerin. And they had actually, from the Civil War, torpedoes shaped to go down a well. And they would load them up with nitroglycerin and then drop a rock on them. Boom! So, it's been around for a long time. Uh, nitroglycerin was discontinued after they did a surface frack and killed a couple people with the nitroglycerin. And there was, you got extra pay if you carried the nitroglycerin. So approximately 1947, somebody got together with other people and they fracked a well using sand, chemicals, and water. Oftentimes, they only used crude oil. And you can frack with crude oil. And we have fracked in the state of California using a light crude oil from about 1960 onward until, hmm, might say we've got enough water to do fracking with water. So, uh, modern fracking. In Huntington Beach, they fracked in 1960 through 62 with crude oil. Problem. We didn't have any water to use then. Now we have water to use. And it's been fracked and fracked and fracked. Uh, if you live near an oil well, it has, you might say, at least a 50-50 chance of having been fracked. And if the price of oil goes over $100 a barrel for any particular time, you can almost guarantee that the well will be refracked if it's been fracked before. And then it will be fracked and fracked and fracked. It can go on for a long time. The wells are quite deep. People say, oh, there's no problem. Well, we're going to have a little bit of a slide presentation. And I always like to put on my Texas face. Shit, yeah. This is George. George is the fount of all fracking. By the way, the government sponsored him to the tune of $500,000, and he, he only had to pay out three fifty. dollars so eh, he's, he's a good Texas oil man. Makes a profit. Excellent. If you see this, this is not a fracking rig. This is a drilling rig. And they can go down to 20, 40, up to 50,000 feet below the surface. Just depends on how long you keep drilling. So, uh, Deepwater Horizon in the Gulf of Mexico was in 5,000 feet of water and 15,000 feet below the sea floor when it blew out. Oh, excellent. This is an aerial of a fracking operation. There's no rig. 
The only rig, next slide. Well, you can see in the far left side, that's the headworks for a fracking job. All of those blue things are big, big, big pumps. And they have to deal, uh, deal with up to 8,000 PSI, pounds per square inch, at the surface. Oftentimes five, up to eight or more, which exerts enough pressure on the formation that they've targeted to break it like a brick. Take a hammer, hit a brick, and you have fracked the brick. Next one. Uh, they have to have, oh, by the way, this is a fracking rig. This is just a hoist. All they have to do is pull things up and down. That's all. They don't need the big rigs, so they can frack almost anywhere. But they need to have a lot of land. So they also need to have water. Sourcing the water, storing the water on site, can be done in tanks, but a big frack of, say, a million gallons of water takes a little bit longer. Okay. Uh, next slide. This is a bad fracking rig. It got a little bit overweight, and the ground was a little bit too soft. Next, next slide. Next slide, next slide. Come on, come on, come on. All right, uh, day. We got fracked again. Uh, yeah. And you might say it's not a big operation, kind of. It depends on what they're doing. And they can do it with no, virtually no visible presence. You might not even hear it if they put in sound walls, and you might not even notice that there are oil fields within the city of Los Angeles, within the, city, in the county of Los Angeles, that you never see. If you've ever been to Long Beach Harbor, looked out, looked at the islands, those are oil developments, and they have been fracked. So, basically, any well can be fracked. Then there's the problems of how to do it. It's quite easy. All you have is big tanks, big pumps, and a blending system to inject water at eh, five to 8,000 PSI down hole. So there are, you might say, quiet operations, and they don't like, oh, here's a fracking injector head. That's all that they have to have. That is capable of withstanding pressures up to 8,000 PSI. That's all you see. No big rig, nothing. They'll have few hoists and such like that. Next slide. Occasionally they have some problems. Real time pictures in Louisiana. Eh, their regulations aren't as good as ours. Then, next slide. And if you have a real bad day, if you can't see it, there's two, four, six pump trucks that have been incinerated. You're dealing with highly flammable, in some cases, explosive materials. When I was at the Ross Dress for Less at 3rd and Hopton, we had 100% lower explosive limit and free air with methane. The fire department left all the fires going because they wanted to know where the methane was. So they had to put fans on us to keep the explosive limits down to a reasonable level. And we were there for three days while a blowout occurred. Next slide. We need water, lots of water. Right now, California has very small frac jobs, maybe 80,000 to 100,000, maybe a quarter of a million gallons used in a matter of two days. Next slide. This, you see the yellow stuff, that's sand. They need lots and lots and lots and lots of sand because you're forcing the sand into the formation. That's also with chemicals. This is commonly called flowback. Next slide. Dr. Williams, it's five minutes. Yeah. Whoops, we had a problem. You have problems. <laughs> we got fracked again. 
Uh, you can refract slides also. Can. That's good. Okay. Um, you're dealing with high pressures. Nobody can even imagine what 5,000 or 8,000 PSI deals with. And remember, the gas is going to be coming out at those sorts of pressures. Somebody asked me about going to the Deepwater Horizon and said, I'm too old. I would endanger people because when you're dealing, they probably had 10 to 12,000 PSI on the Deepwater Horizon when it came out. They couldn't control it. Why? Because they didn't want to pay for a test of the blowout preventer. That is a real problem there. It's better if you flash it like this, but this is in Louisiana. They're not allowed to do this in dear old California. Uh, next slide. <laughs> we got practice again. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, the basics, what can we do? If we can support people like Paul and Gary, Patricia, because we're here. We're not in Washington. And you might say, the to-do list, learn what fracking is. Think about it. Think globally. Act locally. You and me here together this morning is the start. You can do it. There's a whole bunch of other things. We have eight to ten bills going through the state legislature. We can have local cities, counties, regional boards do things. So we're here together to learn, to think, to do.